Hello, everyone. Welcome to our workshop. The journey continues. So in this workshop, you're gonna learn what to do after registering for college. So we wanna to talk to you about the concept of summer melt. So what is summer melt? So some of you may have, some of students may have been accepted to colleges or are thinking of plans after high school. And for some reason during the summer, uh, they may get discouraged, may, they may encounter obstacles or challenges that's causing them to think otherwise. And for that reason, for those reasons, they may not end up attending college in the fall. So even though that means that they, uh, some students already receive acceptance letters, um, these challenges and obstacles may cause them to melt away from the college enrollment process. And because of that, that could lead to students not enrolling, and also that could lead to and disrupt their transition from high school to college, and that can also hinder their long-term educational and career goals. So that's what Summer Melt is. And the goal of this workshop is for students to not encounter that Summer Melt. We don't want students to melt away during the summer. So then we're gonna talk about uh, the causes of Summer Melt. So what are some of the challenges and the causes of Summer Melt? First one is financial challenges. Often students th believe, and, and usually they believe this, they start thinking, is, is it too expensive for me to go to college? Um, they may not have a full understanding of their financial aid packet. Uh, they may get a financial aid package, but they may think, oh my God, this is way too over. I mean, I'm in over my head. I may not be able to afford it, or maybe something happened in their family and their parents are not able to support them. The idea is some of the, you got to understand the financial package aid. And it, later on, we're going to go over how you can get help in understanding your financial aid packet. The other challenge is information gap. Uh, a big obstacle is basically students uh, don't have the information and about the college process and the requirement, uh, like the process, what to do afterwards, um, reading, continuing to read their emails and uh, communicating with the colleges. So that could also be a challenge in itself. The other challenge that students may encounter is the lack of support and guidance. So once students graduated from high school, uh, they may not get that support from an adult member. It could be a teacher or a counselor. So they may not have, be able to have a career center to go to and ask for help. Um, so students graduating from high school, there's, they won't have that support. So again, in this workshop or later on, we're gonna talk about resources and where can students go and ask for help so that they don't go through that process of summer melt. So then I'm going to try to pass it over to Mr. T. He's going to talk about the impact of summer melt. All right, everyone. So as we talk about this phenomenon, and, and I know a lot of you might be wondering, well, you know, we were here to figure out what to do after finishing high school. So um, we, we just feel like it's so important to talk about the impact, uh, the causes, and some of the even the benefits of college that I'll get into right now to, to, to give you a better whole picture of this phenomenon so that you can really uh, be conscious of, of why you want to matriculate and transition properly into the next steps after this. So when we talk about impact, one of the first things we want to look at is the, that, that as a whole, right, when we talk about all right, well, individually, it just means that I didn't go into college, right? But as a whole, what we're seeing is that all these different effects that Ms. Tran talked about um, are affecting the enrollment rate, right? So 10 to 20% of seniors that are accepted into college do not enroll to any college. And that's big, right? That shows you that this is a bigger issue, right, than just one or two friends not wanting to go. Um, the next thing is when we talk about low-income students, the phenomenon is, is increased even more, right? We're seeing um, up to 40% of low-income students who are accepted not enrolling, right? That's a huge population, a huge number of students that are not transitioning. Um, next, when we talk about first-generation students, uh, oftentimes these students are the ones who face this this uh, phenomenon the, the, the most because of the lack of guidance and support through the enrollment process in the summer, right? A lot of times first-generation students, they may not have anyone in their family to tell them like, 
by the way, these are the next things you have to do. Um, and that's big, especially once you're leaving high school and no, no longer have the resources that you do um, while you're in school, like counselors or teachers and people who, who you can turn to for, for questions. Um, the next one, number four that we have up here is the financial consequences. Um, students who don't enroll, like you, you're missing out on financial aid packages, scholarships, financial assistance, all this free money, right, for you to get your education that may not be available in the future or that you're just going to miss out entirely. And that that's a big, big loss of, of, of money right there. Um, lastly, we talk about the emotional and psychological impact. You know, I have students who come back um, after they've decided not to go to college um, and, they, and they really regret it and it weighs on them. And, and just that impact, that emotional, psychological impact is huge, right? Because they carry that burden of, of regret of, man, did I make the right decision? And that's big too, right? Aside from all these other physical factors that we can tangibly see, the psychological and emotional one can sometimes be, be the biggest. Um, so again, as we continue to have this conversation with Summer Mel, we want to reiterate and reemphasize the importance of college. So why college, right? You know, I, I got accepted. My counselors told me I should do it. My parents told me I should do it. Maybe some of my friends but I don't know if I actually know what it is or know if there's any benefits, right? So right here, I'm going to go over a few of the different benefits of college and, and, and why it's so important. Um, and I'm going to start off with social mobility, right? When we talk about social mobility, we talk about that, that college gives you skills, knowledge, uh, credentials, opportunities for higher paying jobs and stability. Um, it, it, it truly helps you when we talk about um, the idea of, you know, coming from a family, like, for example, I'll talk about myself for a bit. Um, you know, I came from a low income household and now to be able to have gone to college and, and have a, a, a degree and work in counseling, you know, have a lot more stability and, and the ability to, to help out my family, my parents, myself. So that's big. That's that social mobility. Um, the economic benefits, we're going to talk a little bit about that in the next slide, but the idea of having the access to higher salaries um, and avoiding unemployment rates, right? The, the higher the degree you get, the lower chance that you risk of facing unemployment. Um, there's also the access to job opportunities, right? So a lot more doors open up in terms of what jobs you can get that are well-paying when you have that college degree. Um, something that sometimes is touched on, but but it kind of gets left behind is the, the idea of an expanded network and support. What we mean by that is, is just like we talked a little bit earlier about the fact that first gen students might not have that support going in the summer because they just don't have anyone who's been through that. Um, when you go to college, you're going to meet people from all walks of life. And although you guys are all in one bubble, um, when, when students, when you guys progress into your careers and your lives, you may have friends who um, become doctors, dentists, lawyers, uh, real estate agents, like people that in your future that you can tap into for support and resources. And that's big. Th those are things that you can't really put a price tag on. Um, personal growth is our next one. And, and when we talk about personal growth is you know, a lot of times students think that college is just an extension of high school. I'm just going to go and I'm going to be learning again, right? But a lot of what college is, is that personal growth. It's learning to transition into adulthood, learning to pay your own bills, learning to, to cook for yourself or just to know when to eat for yourself, right? Like structuring your time, right? No one's kind of telling you when you have to do things or when you don't. So that, that idea of that personal growth is big. It's a huge part of what college is. Um, and lastly, the increased access to resources. So a lot of times we talk about the big cost of college, um, but we don't talk about what that cost kind of includes, right? We think it's, oh, it's just the education. Well, it is, but a, a big part of it too is all the resources that you have available to you in college. So, um, you know, there's all types of career counseling, internship opportunities, mental health support, research facilities, all these different things that you have access to as a student and faster access to, right? Um, when you're in high school or what, even when you're in adulthood and you're not in college, to get some of these resources may take a ton of time, right? It, it takes a long time to access mental health facilities, to get into internships, to find available internships. But when you're in college, these things can take 
maybe a couple of weeks, if that, right? You can get right in, you make an appointment, and, and it's a lot less impacted because the colleges have built that in for you. So there's a lot of resources there available to you as well. Um, so now I'm going to go back and kind of highlight what we talked about before, right? The, the earnings and the unemployment rates. So on the left-hand side, you're going to see, this is a chart from 2021 by the U.S. Labor Department. And on the left, what you're seeing is um, the blue columns represent the, the, the average earnings per week um, of individuals based on their degree attainment, right? What that means is how much money do people make on average based on which degree and level of education they got? As you can see, it obviously goes all the way up um, the higher the degree you get. And on the right hand side, you, you see that unemployment rate. So what percentage of people are facing unemployment based on the type of degree they have? Higher the degree, the less likely you are to face unemployment. And that's big, right? Because you, when we talk about unemployment, I, I know sometimes people just think about, do I have a job or not? But really, the, the other impact is that stability, right? Because if you're constantly facing unemployment, or you have to switch jobs, like that lapse in income can be huge, right? Not having income for a month, that can set you back many months. So that stability is a key factor when we talk about the unemployment rate. So when we look at this, we wanted to go uh, beyond and give you a comparison, right, to what the what are some people earning at the high at the with the high school degree and compared to what you're earning with the bachelor's degree right out of college so what we broke down is what you're seeing here is that um the average person is going to make two thousand dollars more per month from graduating from college than that of a person who only graduated high school. Now, this isn't how much they're making. This is how much more they will be making per month. On the bottom left, you're seeing how much more they're making per year, 24000 And when we take that over a five-year period, a five-year span, it's $120,000. So, right, aside from leaving all those things on the table we said before, you're also leaving a lot of money um, and, and, and opportunity on the table as well. So, um, you know, like I said, we just want to brush past all of that. I'm going to go ahead and transition it over to Miss Adame. Um, she's going to go over some more resources and next steps for you guys um, right now. All right. It's good to see everyone. Uh, we're glad to be here to go over this information with you. Uh, my job is to kind of talk about what uh, you're going to have to do to prevent that melt. So I always said, I want you to be, to be ice cream cones and melt all over. We want you to stay solid. You're, you're about to graduate from high school or you have a child that's about to graduate from high school. Um, high school isn't the finish line. High school is lap one. Um, landing in your college or landing at um, your enlistment center, that's lap number two. So let's talk about what you need to get done. And it is a lot, so I'm not going to pretend like it's easy. Um, but if you take care of all these things before you leave school and before you lose the ability to have resources like your counselor or your Cal Soap coach or your college and career techs, um, that will just make your summer easier on you. So let's go over some of the things really quick. First of all, when you um, placed your statement of intent to register, that's for the four-year universities. Usually they ask for a deposit. Now, some schools have deferred the deposit, deposit date when you can do it, but make sure you do that deposit. You don't want to lose your seat there because like Mr. T said earlier, you lose your seat, your seat there, you're going to wait another year to make $2,000 more per month. Um, so make sure you pay your deposit. If it's a financial struggle for you to make the deposit, contact the financial aid office. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll um, let you, you go ahead and make the deposit and then they refund you the deposit after you receive your Pell Grants. Um, so make sure you do that because you don't want to lose your seat because there's other people that will take your seat. So make sure you get that deposit in. The other thing is your financial aid award. Um, you're going to have to go into your student portals and click on accept my financial aid award. Um, if you can't, if you don't understand your financial aid award, and it can be very confusing. So if you don't understand it, don't feel bad. Reach out to somebody that can help you read it. Um, your, like I said, your Cal Soap coaches, your counselors, your career techs can also help you read it. And then once you read it, make sure you accept it because that is free money. And if you don't accept the free money, they're going to give that free money to somebody else. But just be very careful when you accept it because um, there are 
Traditionally, there's um, boxes to accept loans. So just make sure that you're aware of that and how much the loans are for. I always say make the financial aid office your best friend. Uh, if you are just a little bit short on your um, tuition and fees, maybe go into them and say, can we negotiate? Can we look at my financial aid award? Whether scholarships are there available? Can I do work study? Don't think that that's the final document. Make sure if you need a little bit more, they might be able to work with. It's not guaranteed, but you want to make them your best friend. But you do need to go in there and accept your award package. Uh, the other thing is, and this is for community colleges too, is that you do have to do an orientation. Now, the community colleges have to do an online orientation, but the four years, you usually have to do an online orientation or an in-person orientation. And once again, they can pull your enrollment or pull your ability to register for classes in the fall if you do not do the orientation. So you can't just say, oh, I know UCR, my sister went there, I don't need to do the orientation. Uh, nope, you got to do the orientation. So make sure that you go online to your portals or read your emails and make sure that you get signed up for those orientations. Some of them um, allow your parents to go to the orientation with you or you can do the orientation on your own. Uh, now, the next thing for the UCs, especially, you have to register for their placement exams, and that's for the English and math placement. Uh, but I know some of you have done the dual enrollment, the MSJC courses. Uh, if you've done English 101 or Math 105, you get to waive um, that, uh, that um, test, so you don't want to take that test. But definitely go into your portal, see if you have to take those tests. Some of you have AP scores that will waive you from that test also, but you need to make sure that happens before the fall. Now, for me, this is the one that's uh, uh, kind of a pain. That's the, your documentation. So they want your final transcripts. They want your health records, any scores. So to get your final transcripts, you have to use, um, we use parchment in this district. Go into parchment, request your transcript to be sent to the universities. Don't do it now because you don't. your grades aren't posted, but that would be something you do right after you graduate. If you took any community college classes, you're going to have to request those transcripts also because um, the high schools don't issue the college credit, the community colleges do. So you want to make sure you get those sent over so they don't put you in the English class when you don't need to take it. Your health records, you got to work with your doctor's office. And then the AP scores, if you passed any of your AP tests with a three or higher, you need to go into your college board account and have them sent to your school of choice also. And then, of course, if you're housing, make sure you get that stuff done early. First come, first serve for housing. If you want to get uh, one of the best dorms, you do it now. You might even be a little late at this point in the game. Let's hope not. Um, don't wait till the last minute because that means you get the worst dorm out there and you don't want that either. Um, and those of us that have gone to college know you don't want to have a horrible roommate either. All right. And then the last thing is register for classes. After you've done all this other stuff, they're going to open up your registration and you can register for classes. Uh, I know I made it sound easy, but it's not. But I would try to get as much of this done before June 9th so you can have adults on campus that you're familiar with still help you. Um, because as you know, a lot of people, a lot of counselors are off duty during the summer. Uh, the college and career centers are closed during the summer. Um, the Cal Soap coaches, I'm going to talk about a program in the summer. Um, they'll be available to you, but it's a little, it looks a little different. All right, so uh, this is what I was just talking about, the CalSO program, which I'm super excited about. Uh, Riverside County, this is the first time they've done this. They're going to have three sites at the Valverde Library, the David Long Library, and the Betty Gibble uh, Regional Library. They're, from June 5th to June 30th, there's going to be CalSO coaches as well as school counselors at those sites to help you with anything, financial aid, housing, registration, orientation, transcripts. They're all going to be there to help you with any um, any uh, questions that you might have. Some of you might have to submit residency saying that you live in the state of California. So there's a bunch of different things that the re university is requiring. And some of them are really confusing, to be honest. But these centers are all open for you to help you. So please take advantage of these if you come across, because once again, I don't want you to be an ice cream cone melting over the summer because um, that's not good because we want you to make that $24,000 a year in addition in your, the longer in your lifetime. All right, we're going to go to the next slide and we're going to talk about the checklist. So uh, Mr. T is going to open up this checklist for you. I like this checklist because it kind of 
goes over everything that I just talked about, but now you can print it out. You could open it up on your phone, use a QR code, and there's all the different post-secondary options that you might have, as well as what you need to do um, to make sure that you don't melt into an ice cream cone, that you make it, you make it into lap two. You're not at the finish line. You're rounding lap two. You're going to land at that campus. Um, you're going to land at whatever base you're supposed to be at, but we want to make sure that we give you this information before you leave so um, you have access to it. And the last thing I want to cover before we close is, um, in, we don't talk about this a lot at schools, but you need part of taking care of yourself is taking yourself um, during the summer between um, graduation and college is take a deep breath, enjoy. Enjoy the hard work that you just you just did. Enjoy the fruits of your labor. Enjoy the sun. Spend time with your family. Spend time with your friends. They're, they're the ones that are going to fuel you to go around lap two. They're the ones that are going to help you. They're going to stand by you. So kind of take a break from all that school stuff. Get your checklist done, though. But take a break and, and enjoy your summer. This is it. This is the time for you to prepare your heart and your head for the next step in your journey. And it looks different for everybody. Some of you might, one of you might go to the beach. Some of you might be working part time, but take time outside of work just to enjoy. Get your heart in the right place, your head in the right place, because you're going to love it. You're going to love college. You're going to love your future career. Uh, my best summer. To be honest with you, it was my summer between my high school and my first year at Cal State San Bernardino. I worked, but I also enjoyed my time with my family and friends. And that helped me realize I'm no longer a high school student. I am now a college student. It helped me ground my heart. It helped me um, understand that um, it's not about class of 2024 anymore. It's about what I'm going to do with my future. So with that, we're going to close. If you have any questions, please reach out to the Aspire team. Um, we have our contact information here. We enjoy working with you, and we wish you nothing but the best uh, for your future. Take care.